hit that like button if you enjoyed that intro. If you're new here, my name is Al. We go over health tech or anything that allows us to train smarter. Today I'll be going over a device that isn't necessarily new, but during this time of the year it gets brought up often, and that is fitness heart rate monitors. I've had the Polar H10 for well over a year. I bought it with my own money, so by no means is this a sponsored video, but I wanted to check and compare the heart rate accuracy of this against my Apple Watch. With a new updated model on the smartwatches coming out every year, I wanted to know is the heart rate accuracy of an Apple Watch good enough for the average athlete? There are videos on here already that discuss the difference on how a chest strap measures heartbeat versus how a wrist wearable does. So I'm not gonna get into any of that. Instead, what I'll be doing today is I'll be taking these two devices and I'll be going through two different types of wear workouts, an aerobic and an anaerobic. All right, so today is Tuesday, November 30th, and we're gonna start off with the anaerobic test. For this, I am gonna be using as the tools my iPhone 11 Pro. It's already synced up to the Polar H10, and then I have my Apple Watch Series 6, which we're gonna be getting the heart rate directly through the Apple Watch Series 6. For both of these devices, we're using Astrava as the tool that's logging the uh, heart rate analysis. I'm gonna go through a leg workout. I'll put the leg workout right over here, what we'll be doing today. And then afterwards, we could dig in, dive in deep, and just take a look at the comparison. On the iPhone, I have it already paired up to my Polar H10. And you can see right here, under sensors, it's paired already to the Polar H10, and it's got that long number afterwards. Now, on the uh, Apple Watch, you have to go under Bluetooth in order for this test to work, because this device wants to pair automatically to the polar heart rate, you have to turn Bluetooth off. So then the iPhone knows to use its own sensors. Go ahead and open up the Strava app. You see workout. Go ahead and hit done. And we're going to go ahead and start both of these at the same time. Start. Start. <clears throat> OK, so I'll be talking over. Uh, I wanted to show the movements we would be doing. I was aiming for a good amount of volume per set, about 10 to 12 reps. Uh, trying to spike up my heart rate afterwards, I was giving myself like about a one to two minute rest time. When it comes to both of these devices, they, they both did great. The top chart you could see is from Polar. The bottom is the Apple Watch. Both look similar, but in certain areas, the Apple Watch does have more spikes. This is because the Polar H10 is just being more responsive, so it smoothens the chart. Now, I was monitoring both devices during the workouts, which you'll see here. I think I'll show you a clip right now where I spot the difference. Heart rate, 111. Heart rate, 111 on the Apple Watch. Polar, 149. What is up? But look. It's catching up. Let's look back. <laughs> Take a look. Nope. Still says 111 on the Apple Watch. It's catching up. 142, 111, 143, minute 26. Uh, important note on these fitness trackers is we are looking for accuracy to the average heart rate. So despite the difference, the numbers are averaging out. You could see this with the Polar having a max heart rate of 170 versus the Apple Watch 167. Also, the Polar shows a total average of 121 versus the Apple Watch average 122. So this was more of a dynamic strength training environment. We'll go next into an aerobic workout. So I filmed this on the next day didn't get to vlog because I was running late to meeting this run group, but here we are, I made it. And I'll overlay the charts from both devices. Both are very responsive, but in two occasions I had to stop for traffic lights. And you can see when I did by looking at the graphs right where it dips. You'll notice how much more responsive the Polar is versus the Apple Watch. I can share, I can share an example right here of us having to stop, and this is where the wearables on the wrist have a disadvantage from the chest straps. 
because the Apple Watch too. is not as responsive, you could see the dip at the end of the graph appear much more dramatic than the polar readings. We continued running, but in the end, they both really ended up averaging out. I'll put it right here. Polar average heart rate 160 with a max heart rate of 176. Apple Watch average heart rate of 167 with a max heart rate of 172. I hope that was somewhat helpful. I know for me personally, I wish I would have seen a video like this maybe before buying it. My final thoughts are that the two are pretty close to compare. And while yes, more data is always better, do we actually really need it? In all honesty, I personally use my Polar H10 strap, but not so much for the accuracy. I use it mainly when I go to the gym. That's gonna be because sometimes I personally don't like wearing anything on my wrist and that could be when I'm using kettlebells or barbells. Also, if you go to a commercial gym, at least from my experience when I've been to a gold, it's a 24 hour, when I go and I'm wearing one of these, most likely it just connects seamlessly to the device. So it's nice to have that on the dashboard without doing anything. But yes, it does appear that the Apple Watch is pretty comparable to the Polar Strap. And these are just two tests that I was able to record video and show you. But in all honesty, this last week I recorded every workout. So I have over five, over five or six different workouts that I compared and they're all pretty similar. I'm curious, let me know your thoughts. If you were planning on buying any type of heart rate monitor, did this change your mind? Or if you have one, let me know, do you like it? Do you use it? What are your thoughts on it? Any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.